Welcome, everybody. Tonight, it looks like we are a uh, few in number. There uh, was a meeting that started at 6 o'clock, but it seems it's gone a bit longer than expected. So a number of the people are at the meeting, and Susan is on the way now. But we are here. Uh, we've got Barbara and myself, and welcome, Dan and Elias. And uh, Jesus said, whenever two or three I get it in my name. There I am in their midst. Amen. Amen. So he is with us. And um, Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. So <clears throat> it's just thinking about that hymn we just played. You came from the everlasting to the world we live in. Hallelujah for all you have done. If Jesus has done nothing else but has come to become one of us, and that's all we need and he came and he shared in our life he shared in our death he uh, and and he rose to help us share in his resurrection and in this time of um, the world going in a lot of turmoil and many 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 being killed but we trust in the lord amen amen, amen. Um, feel free to unmute yourself when you, or if you need to say something. And um, we're going to start with a reading that has been, it's a reading from uh, the Mass for today. It's a gospel reading, and it is from Luke chapter 21, 1 to 4. So if you have your uh, Bible with you, or uh, you have it on, on the app, just Luke. Chapter 21, 1-4, and Barbara will read it for us. It's a short reading, but there's plenty in it. As Jesus looked up, he saw rich people putting their offerings into the treasury. Then he happened to notice a poverty-stricken widow putting in two small coins, and he said, I tell you truly, this poor widow has put in more than any of them. For these have all contributed money they had over. But she, from the little she has, has put in all she had to live on. This is a, a very challenging uh, reading. You may be familiar with the fact that... Uh, People used to donate for the temple, and this is the temple offering. And here we have Jesus and his disciples watching people putting in money in the temple, rich and poor. Now, probably Jesus and his disciples would have been part of the poor people who are contributing. And here is Jesus is trying to teach a lesson to his disciples. Uh, a funny thought came into my head why they were sitting there watching them <laughs> why are they watching it and I think maybe just Jesus wanted to teach the disciples a lesson this is why he was watching it he didn't need to stand there and see who's putting how much and uh, when we are at church you know uh, it would be silly for people to sit down there and start watching how much this put and how much that put. So it's the same in in uh, in the temple. But Jesus uh, had a specific purpose that he wanted to teach his disciples. So putting their offering into the temple. Then he happened to notice a poverty-stricken widow. It's interesting. It's didn't say just a poverty-stricken woman. How did he know she was a widow? I don't know. But I think, again, it's part of the lesson that he wanted to teach. Because the scriptures, um, particularly, um, there is sort of profession. Um, it's an option for the poor and the widows. Jesus and the scriptures teaches us particularly to look after the widows and the orphans and the poor and the marginalized. And he is saying, he says, here is this one of those people 
with nothing much in her position. And yet she comes to make the offering of the temple to the temple. And she put not one coin, but two. No, she could have put one coin. But no, she put two. And Jesus points out she, she gave all she had. Those two coins was all her wealth. Um, during uh, the last couple of days, we've been talking about fundraising and, uh, and, and um, finding ways to help uh, those who are poverty-stricken people in uh, Gaza and West Bank and um, who are totally and completely destitute. And sometimes we think, you know, I really don't have much money. How, am I, how much can I contribute? And here is a very good lesson. Now, one of the things that I thought of is saying, okay, but there is a difference giving to the temple and giving to people. But for us Christians, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it? Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So it's not about giving it to some temple over in Jerusalem. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul tells us, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you? So when we help people, particularly Christians who are temple of the Holy Spirit, then we are giving to the temple. We are giving to God's people. Yeah, I know there is a difference between tithing, almsgiving, and free offering. And this will come under the free offering side. But no matter what category you want to put it under, it is important to know that God is watching and he knows what you're giving. It's not like he says, okay, well, but the, the point is, are we giving from our heart? Are we giving from our need even to help those who are in more need than us? So he makes it clear, this poor widow has put in more than any of them. For well, they put the contributed out of their abundance, but she did out of her poverty. She put all she had to live on. All she had to live on. And when you put all you have to live on, what is left? Trusting God. Hmm? Trusting God. Absolutely. That's exactly the point. Then you are relying on God's providence. And is he going to let you down? Absolutely not. And I want to rely on God's providence. The amount you give, it will give you a hundredfold. I'll share with you a story that happened to Barbara and I many years ago. Uh, we were uh, in the beginning of our married life trying to save some money to buy a house and so on. And I was living on uh, uh, um, like I, I was in full-time ministry and I was totally relying on whatever the Lord provide, on God's providence. And I didn't have much money. But I, the Lord always provided what I needed and a little bit more. But this particular time, we were going to give a life in a spirit seminar in somebody's house. And um, we stopped at a couple, uh, an older couple who didn't have much money. And I felt the Lord saying to give them $50. So we gave them $50. And then we went on. We went at the seminar, we finished the seminar, and then we went and visited friends of ours uh, for dinner. And as we, the man uh, likes to do his tea in a particular way, so I was joining him in the kitchen while Barbara and his wife were having a chat. And he said to me, uh, Cozy, um, I, I just want to share something with you. We just sold a flat and we had an, a windfall. And I feel the Lord wants me to give you 
$5,000 towards a deposit on your house. <laughs> and I just was, you know, blown away. I just didn't know, I just felt so full of gratitude. But the words of Jesus came true to me. Give and it will be given to you a hundredfold. Fifty dollars becomes five thousand. Good investment. Mm -hmm. so, and in one day, mm -hmm. in the same day, mm -hmm. so I don't forget. And I still can now think about it. Mm -hmm. So that's why we encourage to be generous. We cannot outdo the Lord in generosity. We cannot outdo him in generosity. So let's, this lesson is, is for, for us, but also uh, tonight let's think of those people who are in need and pray that the Lord will open the floodgates of heaven and provide for them. Let's pray for uh, peoples to soften their hearts and to be generous. So, and, and that's all that's going to contribute to bringing peace to people. The people are totally and completely devastated. I had the phone call from somebody from uh, Ramallah, and he was just telling me how destitute the people there are. And he's a Christian, and he got about 10 of them. They just want to leave the country. They say, we cannot stay there anymore. There's so much hatred mm -hmm. from the settlers. They're harassing them all the time, supported by the army. This guy is a businessman, and um, he's got his own car yard. And he said for the last four months, he didn't sell one car. And they cannot keep on living like that. And things, instead of getting better, they're getting worse. Now, unfortunately, we, we cannot help people like that. This really would be uh, you know, beyond our means at the moment to uh, try and bring people here. I know there are some people who have already come, uh, supported by their families and relatives here and so on. And that is a challenge in itself. We need to even support those ones who are already here, who came from Gaza after their homes and, 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 and uh, their livelihood and everything was destroyed. And they had no way to rest their head. Mm. The ones in the West Bank maybe still have somewhere to rest their head. But it is a challenge. How can we support those people to stay there? Or else the Holy Land is going to become a museum of holy places without, without a holy community, without a Christian community. And what is the worth of the Holy Land without Christian community? So let's pray for all of this tonight and uh, the trust that the Holy Spirit will inspire people, will soften their hearts, will uh, uh, find a way. He always good in finding ways, even through miracles. Mm. Amen. 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 So if anybody want to put the, a comment here uh, before we start praying and interceding, just feel free to, to share what, what's on your I, um I want to say something. Um, I think we, we've we lost, um, you know, the, the Christian church, you know, we've been 2,000 years. I think we've lost uh, our way in lots lots of churches doesn't mean you know it's not it's not one church uh and i think what we lost is um uh you know if we go back to the basics if you read acts you know jesus said uh sell what you belong and bring it together and support the community because that's what people how christianity really flourished because you know you sell what you've got you or you share with what you've got with everybody else so you knew who the money was going to but let's say now you know the money is is picked up you know on on sundays and then it goes into a into the kitty 
and then it goes into a bank account, the church's bank account, and the church thinks, oh, you know, let me buy a piece of land next door. I'm going to build this uh, so I can make some profit out of a child care center or a home uh, home care, old, old age care facility or things like that. So the church, instead of supporting the community, the poor inside the church, which are, is really the church, the church is the people. The, now the church is what they're doing. They're going, let me buy the piece of land next door and let me build more buildings. Yes, yeah. we understand the building is going to help the community for old age people and all this stuff, but they're thinking about a return on investment because you can't, you know, you the bank will not even lend you the money if there's no return on investment. So you started becoming like the money changers in the temple. And so you leave all these people that really need support um, because there's a lot of poor. We still got poor, poor people. And instead of the money sitting in a bank account or, you know, you, you're sitting on millions of dollars of, of real estate, you got to support the people, whether overseas or here. It's the same concept, right? So I think that's where we are going a bit far from what the the real purpose of the church where people love each other because remember the reason jesus fl church flourished is because he said we love each other if we love each other then, then it's like you know you've got kids you give them money you support them mm -hmm. and we've gone so far away from what it is to really love each other right um, and I think we, we, we need to bring back the real purpose of the church that Jesus Christ formed 2000 years ago. And, and we know, you know, we, 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 we come from there. We're the descendants of Jesus Christ followers. We know what it's, you know, we, we, we live it, you know, for us, the Holy land is alive. Um, and the Bible is, is alive with us because when we read, we read about us, <laughs> Uh, yeah. And we got to go back to that. Yeah. So well, the churches do have money to support the people. Um, yes, there is time. I think this is a time where the anything should be channeled for the needy yeah. and for the people rather than projects and building. Absolutely. There are times that could be times of comfort and consolation and so on where people can build and expand and so on that is time but this is the time yeah. to help those who are in need that is the time to help those who are in need thanks susan anybody else just make it short because we're running out of time uh, but please I say, the lord loves cheerful givers Amen. Amen. Thanks, Elias. Uh, it's um, it's it's it gets a bit more complicated in in comparison to the Old Testament, where the temple was the government system, it was the social security system. It was everything wrapped up in one and we live in a sort of a dualistic world now where we've got we pay taxes to the government which you know is supposed to look after people too and we've kind of the church has got absorbed into that secular system and you know as we we haven't really you know, our communities are not very strong, our Christian communities. I'm just talking about the West. Uh, you know, we've, we've become deracinated and individualised and, you know, it just, it's it's a long way away from the old you know, 2,000 years ago. But somehow or another, we've got to, you know, we've got to be able to, by the help of the Holy Spirit, on working on individual hearts, because it's difficult because we're not a community and like there's needs in Palestine that you know I'm I've, I don't have anything to do with it but I can't see the need of only going on what I've what I've heard you know they're not they're not people that I know I don't have any contacts there 
Mm. But, you know, as the Holy Spirit moves on individuals, it's the only way that it's going to work, I think. I mean, Paul in the in the book of Acts raised a offering for the church in Jerusalem and those people didn't know the people in Jerusalem, probably, well, from all the places that he was in, the Philippi, and the Philipp, not Philistia, where is it? Philippi. Yeah. And uh, Corinth. Yeah, when they were relying on Paul as a, as a channel, I guess, to, um, as a channel of trust, yes. to channel that money and a channel of truth to say, well, there is a true need there. And also you can trust me to manage, you know, to handle your money to get to the people in need and not get, you know, this. It's the other thing. Everyone in the West is all, you know, there's that many charities and that many places to give and everyone's got to got charity burnout. So we have to rely on the Holy Spirit to move on our, on individual hearts to, yep. you know, to meet these needs. When we're not one community, we are a community of believers, the body of Christ, but, we're, you know, we're not a community that's living together that's sort of helping one another because we're in close proximity, if you know what I mean. Some Paul says, yeah, we are part of one another, all the members of the body of Christ, we are mm -hmm. part of one another. And, uh, yeah, uh, this is not something we impose on people. Um, even God is not imposing it on us. And he allows us to be generous, and but we can pray, as I said earlier, we can pray that the Lord will touch people's heart and will show them how much to give, where to give, and so on. But uh, thinking, okay, I am not just giving out of the goodness of my heart, but as a brother or a sister in the Lord for somebody who is more needy than I am. Okay, well, let's then and just say a few quick prayers uh, in that regards, and then we will uh, play the hymn again and be grateful for what God has done for us because we are the needy that Jesus has not only provided for, but he came and shared our life. So yes, uh, Lord, we do thank you for coming and sharing our lives, sharing our poverty. You emptied yourself from all your glory and majesty and richness to enrich us with your poverty. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, dear God, I ask that you may inspire as we just heard inspire everyone in the world to give not just in the middle east but everywhere lord there's so many people suffering from natural disasters and man-made disasters help us to see that help the entire world lord to see the need to give and to share and we thank you for your for your providence lord hear us lord hear, hear our prayers yes. lord we thank you for the unmeasurable generosity that you have shown towards us in every way spiritually and materially you gave your all when you came to this earth, Lord. And it always compels us as Christians to live that same way, Lord, that you did. And I just pray that you'd move on all of our hearts, all of the body of Christ all over the world. We're specifically thinking about the situation in Gaza right now with so much tragedy and need and desperation, Lord. And I pray for generous hearts. I pray your Holy Spirit would move on people, even those that naturally disinclined towards 
the people that live across that fence, those that are more inclined to give to the other side of the fence, but I just pray you'd move on their hearts, Lord, across the whole body of Christ and you'd reveal the the tragedy to everybody, Lord, to move on their hearts. And I pray also for uh, those that receive the money that it would be well organised and it wouldn't be wasted and it would go to those that are in the most need, that the most urgent and uh, present need. Yes. The people that are starving and thirsty and need medical attention, Lord. So just pray for organisation and not chaos, Lord, but order in that area. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And yes, Lord, we do pray that all the channels will be opened for humanitarian aid to come in for food, for water, for electricity, for all the needs, and that what is happening now, Lord, will continue and not stop, Lord. Lord, we pray that the guns will be silenced forever, mm. not only for a day or two or four, but they will not, <clears throat> fire will not be open again. Mm. And Lord, we pray for the leaders of all sides that you may inspire them to see what the truth is and for themselves and for the other, to consider the other as well. And Lord, we lift up all these prayers and we pray for the coming of your kingdom in the words you taught us. Oh, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses. And we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us, us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and, is now, and, and ever shall be, be world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining in and uh, uh, we'll continue to pray and uh, we'll come back again next, uh, tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. On Fridays we having uh, it at 8 o'clock instead of 9 o'clock and uh, so we can have the children and the families coming along. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be in a, by way of uh, praying the rosary, mm -hmm. which is reflection on the mysteries of Jesus's life. Mm -hmm. And uh, lift that up to the Father by way of intercession. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, and uh, God bless. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay around and have a bit of a chat, you're welcome. But uh, if you need to go, please go. And have a sleep. Hmm? We're having the hymn now. The hymn after the yeah. yeah. So.